Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about mixtures, the two types of mixtures, and some examples of them, as well as how to separate mixtures. So let's get started. So there are two types of mixtures. The first one we're going to talk about is homogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous mixtures are often also called solutions, um, just as another vocabulary term for you, and we're going to spend um, a whole unit talking about solutions later on in chemistry. Um, but a homogeneous mixture is a mixture where the composition is the same throughout. So that prefix um, homo means same. Um, so homogeneous means it's the same throughout. Um, a great example here is uh, Kool-Aid or like any type of drink where you've put like a powder in water, um, lemonade, et cetera, because you want that mixture to be completely the same throughout. You don't want to drink like chunks of Kool-Aid powder. That's disgusting. So we want those types of things to be homogeneous, the same throughout. The second type is a heterogeneous mixture. So this is the opposite. That prefix hetero means different um, or opposite. So we have things not the same throughout. So we have just an uneven mixture um, where things are, um, every sample is going to be a little bit different. Okay, An example here would be a pizza. You might have a little bit of a different piece. Um, every time you grab one, a little bit of different amount of cheese, different amount of pepperoni, different amount of sauce, crust, etc. cetera. Um, you know, the goal is to make it as even as possible, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be perfectly even the same way that a Kool-Aid drink would be perfectly even. So um, a couple more examples for you on the next slide. So we're going to look at whether these are heterogeneous or homogeneous mixtures. This would be a great opportunity to kind of test yourself. I'm going to go ahead and just put them all on the screen for you. So if you want to pause the uh, video, test yourself, and then I'll go over the answers. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, that heterogeneous mixtures are going to be A, homogeneous mixtures are going to be B. Um, so I will label them for you. So. Uh, Chanel number no. five, a perfume. We definitely know that that's going to be homogeneous. We want that to be homogeneous. We want our perfume to have the same level of scent in every spritz of it, right? Um, chicken noodle soup, definitely going to get a different spoonful every time. So that's going to be heterogeneous. Coffee, we definitely want to be homogeneous, right? We don't want coffee grounds in our coffee. Um, Sometimes it may happen, sometimes maybe your creamer didn't mix all the way in, whatever, but we want that to be a homogeneous mixture. I'm going to skip peanut butter for now, we'll get back to that one. Fruit salad is definitely heterogeneous, um, different spoonful every time. Gatorade, again, if we think about, these are all food related, but if we think about taking a sip of Gatorade, we want that Gatorade to taste the same every time. We don't want, again, clumps of sugar or whatever. Trail mix is going to be a heterogeneous mixture. We can, you know, scoop out all of the M&Ms if we want, um, all the peanuts, what have you. Okay. Um, peanut butter is an interesting one. Peanut butter is one where we have to think about what type of peanut butter, have to give it a little bit of qualification, right? Because if you buy natural peanut butter, for example, you're going to have that kind of layer of oil on the top, and that would make it a heterogeneous mixture. Chunky peanut butter would also be um, heterogeneous. Whereas um, kind of regular Skippy, I think this says super creamy, I think. We're going to go with, oh, no, it's extra crunchy. So that's going to be heterogeneous. But if we got like Skippy super creamy peanut butter, that would be homogeneous. And there's actually like homogenizing agents in there to make sure that it stays homogeneous. So hopefully you got all of those correct on your little self-test. All right, separating mixture. So what's unique about mixtures is they can be separated based on physical means. So we can utilize their physical properties. So their difference in color, their difference in shape, their difference in um, magnetism, density, all sorts of physical properties can be utilized to separate the materials that are in a mixture. And we're gonna work on that more. So we can use their different states of matter, we can use their boiling points, their melting points, magnetism, density, all of those are great examples. Um, if we think about that trail mix example, right, we can literally pull out the M&Ms by the fact that they are a different color than the raisins, the peanuts, the walnuts, whatever. 
Okay. So another example here that might be a little more scientific, um, maybe need to be done in a lab space. If we have a salt water solution, so we have salt mixed with water, we cannot physically pull those pieces of salt out with our fingers, right? They're dissolved. It doesn't work that way. Um, but water boils at a much lower temperature than salt. So if we boiled that water, all the water would evaporate and then the salt would be left behind. So we'll talk more about separating mixtures as well. The last thing we're gonna cover is this kind of organizer of matter. So remember matter is anything that has mass and takes up space, right? It has a mass and a volume. So we can divide matter into two categories. We can divide it into mixtures and pure substances. Mixtures are things that can be physically separated. So we have different materials that are in the same container. Maybe they're mixed together and dissolved, but they are mixed together. Pure substances cannot be physically separated. If we wanna break down a pure substance, we have to do it chemically. So that's kind of our first question to separate those two categories, right? Into mixtures and pure substances, both key chemistry vocabulary words. Then we can look at those different types of mixtures that we just talked about, homogeneous mixtures or solutions and heterogeneous mixtures. We also have um, a couple types of heterogeneous mixtures, colloids and suspensions. Those are kind of special types, special cases if you wanna look into those. Pure substances on the other hand have only two types. We have compounds and elements. Okay, elements are made up of only one type of atom. Not just one atom, but one, uh, let's go ahead and put that in there, type of atom. And compounds have more than one type of atom. So forgive my handwriting, writing straight up on the screen. Okay, so this is a snapshot of everything matter um, that you need to kind of keep in mind. So this is a great way to organize this information, organize these vocabulary words, and connect them with one another. So if you have any questions, make sure to follow up with your teacher. But thanks for watching.